Um, you know, the indictment, this is again by the special counsel, he, that he made false statements about purchasing that firearm. The maximum penalty on this could be 10 years in prison for one count, which is that false statement. Now, this is only related, I should say, to Hunter Biden here. So the federal government, again, just indicted him on federal gun charges. There are three counts total. The indictment lasts about four pages by the special counsel for obtaining that firearm, for making a false statement related to that firearm. And then for that false statement, he could get 10 years on that one count alone. We're still going through this. We just got this released. Uh, but again, we, these, these are on the books now. These are, are felony charges for a gun possession uh, from Hunter Biden. I'll go through this and keep going. Edward Lawrence, thank you so yeah. much for bringing us that news. And, you know, a lot of people have been waiting for this moment, guys, um, feeling that it's been very unjust what's happened with Hunter Biden, what, how you see people on the right treated, uh, you know, with alleged crimes, how you see people on the left treated. Special mm -hmm. counsel uh, David Weiss here, you know, bringing these federal charges was also the same person who negotiated the sweetheart deal for the same particular situation. So it seems that this is coming full circle when that judge denied that deal um, and there was a little bit more investigation into it, a lot of calls for justice. You wonder, though, if justice will be served. I still go back to this point um, that a lot of people who have been watching this very closely, legal scholars and the like, have said since David Weiss is in charge, this indictment just may be a formality in right. some ways to bring this all to the surface and then try to cut another sweetheart deal. I don't think the American people would accept that. But we'll see. Uh, it's a great point. You you have to remember, and everybody does, that these indictments aren't the fresh. West was granted some thinking, well, maybe he was em embarrassed about the sweetheart deal that he was caught uh, in making. And this would be his second bite at the apple, so to speak. A few more details here to share um, out of the indictment that's being circulated by our colleagues here uh, on the Fox News side, as Edward mentioned are looking at three counts here. Uh, count one, false statement in the purchase of a firearm. Count two, false statement related to information required to be kept by a federal firearms licensed dealer. And count three, possession of a firearm by a person who is an unlawful user of or addicted to a controlled mm. substance, guys. Which he was at the time. Right. And anybody else that would be charged with this could potentially see up to 10 years uh, in prison as a result of it. They were going to let him walk. On the phone now, <laughs> Sam Dewey, yeah. former congressional investigator. Sam, I want to get your take um, on where we stand right now, where this progresses, how it progresses. Do you think Hunter Biden will g see some jail time? I mean, I don't at the end of the day, because I think it's pretty clear that if push comes to shove, he'll get a pardon. Uh, I, I don't think there's any dispute mm. on that. Uh, win or lose in terms of President Biden's reelection, he's going to get a pardon uh, no later than January 20th. I think in the meantime, there is some level of significance to this. It means Weiss is moving forward, but it also calls into question uh, what else is being done? Is this just the first step in a uh, further investigation of these charges with appropriate authority, or is this uh, window dressing? I do think that there is a real question there, and I think that Weiss himself has a lot of credibility problems, yeah. because if you look at his letters, he's been inconsistent himself on the authority he had previously from the attorney general. Mm. Sam, great point. Stay there if you would. We want to go back to Edward Lawrence. He has more details in this. Edward, what are you learning? Yeah, and uh, Brian, I've been going through this a little bit. We found some of the punishments in here. Now, the count one and count two have no jail time attached with them. They are three years supervision, $250,000 fine. But count three, that's the bigger count in this. That is an interstate commerce count. It's moving a firearm illegally uh, across state lines. That's 10 years in prison with a fine of $250,000 and also three years in prison. So that is the real meat, so to speak, of this uh, this indictment here. And, and it does appear, if they go forward with this, there's no deal here uh, where there could be jail time for the president's son should they get a conviction related to this. So this is a far cry from that plea deal that the, uh, uh, the now special counsel struck with the defense uh, in this case. Back to you guys. Edward, thanks for that. Uh, Sam, you're still with us there. Uh, so You've got a couple counts. There's not much of a, uh, you know, a punishment there, let's say. There's no jail time. But the third count, interstate commerce clause, 
violation would be 10 years, potentially no plea deal. So this is a trial situation. Talk a little bit about what would come out potentially if, in fact, you, you went to sort of a, a full trial situation, Sam. So in a full trial, you're not going to really have much to try because the only question is, was he addicted and did he possess the gun? I think what's going to be significant up front is there will be a lot of litigation about the constitutionality of the statute. Hmm. Uh, court, uh, not the false statement. It is significant that those were charged in that even if the interstate commerce count is unconstitutional, the false statement counts survive. But I think the initial argument is going to be, is this statute constitutional as applied to Hunter Biden? And I think you're going to ironically see a lot of proponents of gun control arguing it is. Right. And that makes a lot of sense. Now, his attorney, I believe, has gone on other networks um, and, you know, kind of discussed this and said, basically, what is it that Hunter Biden did? So he had this gun. He didn't do anything with it. And as a result, this is kind of a big nothing burger. But a lot of other people feel that, you know, especially his father, who is a proponent of a lot of the laws um, and a lot of the procedural, you know, things that you steps that you had to go through in order to obtain a firearm in this country, that making those false statements, um, being a, a substance abuser at that time, it, it, the precedent it sets is pretty terrible. Yeah, I, I think it is. It is an interesting contradiction, and I do think that there's going to be a lot. Mm -hmm. And, in, I mean, given his state at this time, the government may say, okay, I can actually do that. I can prove he was constantly just in a narcotic bench and actually have that at trial, which would be quite extraordinary to see a trial about was this person on a two-month-long bender when they had the gun. And the point is not, by the way, that you didn't do anything with the gun. The point of the statute is you don't want them to have the gun because they might do something with it, or also they might do something unsafe with it, in this case, to throw it in the dumpster. You know, the, 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 the other concern with this statute is, do you, you know, do you want someone who is, you know, using heroin and haze, having a gun and leaving it out around small children? Yeah. It, it's just how accidents happen. Sam, I'm wondering if you can kind of take us through what you would expect uh, next steps and a timeline to be from here, given this indictment coming down here middle of September. If we were to think about a trial being possible here for Hunter Biden, when do you think that would happen? Um, it doesn't seem particularly complicated case, as you've hinted. Uh, would you expect this to be resolved or wrapped up before the end of the year? Or do you think it would stretch into next year? I think it would stretch because I think there's you have to go through the normal minutia. He's got to be brought in. He's got to be arraigned. He's got to plead. They'll set conditions of release. Uh, um, probably they won't change them. He's already on release. And then I think there'll be a lot of briefs filed and a lot of legal arguments uh, if it goes there. Um, you know, we'll see. I, I, I would expect that there will be a fairly long, large amount of briefing. I bet a lot of parties will file amicus briefs. There's going to be a lot of mm -hmm. argument over it. And Judge Noriega is a very good judge, moves extremely efficiently, um, is on top of the ball. But just given, given the amount of legal issues, and she herself said at the hearing, uh, you know, she, she acknowledged that there is this issue. So she's right. very attuned to it. She's already researched the cases, and I think she will be fully expecting to have, uh, Sam, you know. Uh, to the issue of timeline, um, if I can interject for a moment here, because I think it's relevant. You know, former President Trump has been fighting a lot of different charges in a lot of different places, mm -hmm. a lot of battles, right? Um, and he's, he's trying to put out all these fires. But the Biden family's got a lot of issues, too. It's, it's not just this indictment now for Hunter Biden, um, but it's also Kevin McCarthy wanting to do an impeachment inquiry into President Biden to try to dig into um, his uh, part 
if there was a part that he played in his son's overseas business dealings as well. That's something that the country is very much focused on. So as these two things play out together, um, not necessarily in sync, but leading up to the 2024 election, what do you think the implications are for the president? The implications are he's facing scrutiny from all sides, and he's finally being called to account for his conduct. And I think the most significant thing we've seen recently is how much the story has changed. It's gone from my son didn't do business in China to there is no direct proof he committed a crime in China. And yes, I was on the phone call out of love. Sam, I, sorry, can I just jump in one second on this? Uh, on that point, Sam, and I'm the non-lawyer in this group here, but I do remember in the special plea deal that he got, there were some tax charges right. there, okay? I'm looking at the screen now, and I'm seeing a lot of stuff about gun, charges, gun charges, but of course, when it comes to, you know, money coming in from overseas, that was the tax stuff. Two other districts involved, we've got in theory, the special counsel engaging in ongoing investigations there. So it's a wait and see, but that's a- How, how soon they will be. Um, I think the timing is interesting and I would hope that they would be filed sooner rather than later. They brought them initially, why not now? Is there something else that they could be still investigating? Yeah, the tax charges that were brought were misdemeanor charges that are never brought. They're the type of, of minor charge that is never enforced that you bring as part of a plea deal. And what I would expect is happening is they're going back and looking at the much more serious charges. Mm -hmm. So an example would be tax evasion. Mm -hmm. I deducted as business expenses payments to my prostitutes. Another example would be did I declare all the money I was getting from overseas dealing? And your point about the money and his father is perceptive because right. the money all links. The tax charges come from the money. Farrah charges would come from the money. Influence peddling charges would right. come from the money. Well, and that's it's the thing, right? There. When it comes back to Hunter Biden, so many people are asking the question, what was he doing to be earning um, at least a million dollars a year from Burisma at a time when he admits in his book, Sam, that he was using drugs? <laughs> Um, it doesn't really seem like he had the skill set to be advising that company. And so, so many people are saying the tax evasion, uh, deducting, you know, certain kinds of expenses, as you noted, buying um, expensive vehicles with some of this money that was coming in. What really was the service? It's the only direct evidence we have is what Mr. Comer got from Devin Archer, which is at a minimum selling the brand. Right. And it looks like a lot more when you look at the fact that official action appears to align. And that's why hopefully Mr. Weiss is looking at taking all the steps that the IRS whistleblowers bravely testified they were prohibited from state taking. So he can figure out the whole money picture and that's why it's important that the House uh, keep investigating. I should add, I just saw something. I think Hunter Biden's lawyers are also going to try to argue that the plea deal is somehow still in effect. Hmm. Uh, so they're going to try to make some technical argument uh, to claim the government screwed up. So I think we're going to see a lot of law nor nerds digging in all the papers that are filed yeah. initially. Um, Sam, we really appreciate you calling uh, in on this breaking news because your insight, obviously, invaluable. Really appreciate it. Thank you so much. And obviously, uh, to you at home, we're going to keep following this story.